my god, ow. This is a tragedy caught on film. Oh my god, ow. How do I get out of this? Ow! I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> this mirror's gotta go. Eating my hair. What does this mean and how do I fix it? $231. Something I want to add to my list of skills. Hello. Welcome to my bathroom. This is a space that I haven't talked about too much because I've kind of just been like okay with it. And the thought about making it over kind of overwhelmed me to be honest because there's a lot of things in here I know that I can't do personally, such as retiling or recounter topping because that just feels like above my skill grade and thinking about that made me not want to touch this room at all because it felt like too much. But this video is going to be kind of like a follow me along mini makeover video where I'm hoping to do a bunch of little things around the room to make a big difference in the end. I think this is going to take place over multiple days, a bunch of DIYs will happen and in the end I'm hoping we have what feels like a new space. So if you guys are up for the adventure, I'm here, I'm ready. Let's do this bathroom makeover together. Okay, so before we get into this, I think the first thing we should discuss are the things that I feel like are wrong with the bathroom or the things that I want to change about it. I guess the biggest thing if you were to ask me is that this bathroom feels like it has too many different styles going on. So I tried to bring these black pieces in when we moved in and I do really like them, but we've got that. We've got white walls. The floor and the countertop are both like a beige cream. Some of the hardware is silver. This is silver. The door is silver. Up here is silver. This light is black. And then speaking about styles, this cabinet is like, I don't even know how you would describe it, like Victorian-esque. It's got so much molding going on. These handles are super vintage looking. And then we got this shelf, which we could discuss separately about this shelf. There's a lot going on. So I'd like to sort of pick maybe a specific color scheme and work with that. The biggest thing I think I'm gonna do is get rid of the silver tones because most of what I'm seeing in here is warm tone. Like this is very warm tone. The white is kind of like a warm tone. So I'm feeling like the silver is not working. Some other little problems. The toilet seat is missing the caps for the back of the screws, which just doesn't look good. The side of this cabinet has like white paint smeared all over it from, I don't know, the person before. Up here is like clearly a patch job that kind of happened, but two different colors of white paint were used and it's very obviously different white paint up there, which doesn't look good. Oh, and this shower curtain rail is totally cracking. Like the white plastic veneer on it is cracking off. So I'd like to kind of fix that too. Okay, so now you know kind of some of the problems that I have with this bathroom as it is and kind of some of the things that we're gonna be tackling in this makeover. But first things first, let's talk about this shelf. This shelf is odd for many reasons. It has this jet out, oh, my bad. It has this like jet out down here, which I don't know what's under it, what it's doing. It's got this molding around the edge, which is another style. <laughs> and then I don't know what it is about the placement, but I feel like stuff just falls off it all the time. Like this little lip is not enough to hold anything off on properly, but it's enough for things to like get caught and fall. And it's just, it's odd. And then the other strange thing about this is, I don't know if you can tell, but this mirror, kind of goes down and then has a little jut out and then keeps going. I don't know if it was a chicken and the egg situation of who came first, whether the mirror had this like jut in it, so therefore they built the shelf to accommodate that, or the shelf was already here, so they cut the mirror to fit around it. I don't know. Basically what I'm trying to say is I don't like this shelf. I wanna take it out. That might be tomorrow morning's first project of the day. There's no screws. I don't know how it's in this wall. That'll be the first exciting adventure of this makeover. Okay, I will see you guys tomorrow for an exciting start to this makeover. I hope you guys are excited. Make sure you subscribe to this channel because I, if you don't know, we do DIYs and makeovers all the time and I'd love for you to stick around for other exciting ones we have upcoming in the future. Alrighty, today I'm gonna officially classify as day one because we're finally doing things in here. Let's start with the shelf. It's weird how there is no screws or anything on this. Like I don't know how it's on the wall, but I think we're gonna have to do an old school demolition style and just try and knock it off.
I think it's just glued on, which is kind of crazy that it's this hard to get off. Oh my god, wait, check this out. The glue that is holding this to the wall. That's it. That's how it was on. All right, this wall is coming along really nicely. I think it just needs a little bit more patching to make it as smooth as it possibly can be. But speaking of painting and patching different areas while I'm here. I want to swap this mirror out for a black option. I've been looking in stores and keeping my eye out for a black wall bathroom mirrors and I feel like they don't exist. I don't know why they only ever seem to be in silver. So I think I'm gonna have to check Amazon or somewhere like that for a specific one. All right, Amazon, let's do this. Hmm, okay. Oh, okay. Wait, $231, 200. This is basically what I want, but for nowhere near that price. Are you kidding? Okay, let's search some thing else here. Black bathroom mirror. Okay. Okay. It's weird how little options there are for this kind of thing. $88, like why? Why are these so expensive? I would honestly paint mine if I thought that it wouldn't chip. It's a delicate thing of metal to paint black. I don't think it would work. <laughs> there is literally nothing. Okay, let's check out that other, okay, $200, no. 43, that's kind of expensive, but it's low-key exactly what I'm looking for oh I could do gold too although I like that on that wall like the towel rack and everything is black so we could keep that wall kind of black and white I I think I'm gonna do it I can get it in like a day it's the right color scheme it's a little expensive but hey it's better than $200 Okay, so since I did take that shelf off of the wall, I do have plans to put another one back up so I can put things somewhere, but before I get to that, there's one thing I need to figure out first, and that is that I want to switch out the faucet for a brass, bronze, aged gold. I feel like there's so many words for this color. <laughs> and I ordered one off Wayfair a while ago. Andy's box. This is the faucet. It's like one of those ones where the water comes out kind of like in a straight line, <laughs> if that makes sense. I'm really excited about this, but that being said, I have never switched out a faucet in my life. I don't have much experience with plumbing in general at all, but it is something that I really wanna learn and it's something I wanna add to my list of skills that I sort of know how to do. So we're gonna attempt this together. I am a little bit overwhelmed. I thought it wouldn't be that hard because it's not like I'm building a sink from scratch. Like it's already there. I'm just kind of replacing the hardware part of it. I don't have to set up all of the pipes and whatnot. Like that's already there. But then, can we just take a look at this picture? Do you see how many different parts are listed that all go together? <laughs> I was like, oh, it'll just be the spout and the two handles, easy. But then you look at this and there's like 50 different little things. So I did what probably a lot of people do is I went to YouTube and looked up some tutorials on how to swap out faucets and it made me feel a lot better. It doesn't feel like it's that difficult. So I think I'm gonna have a stab at it. It might be a little bit difficult to explain it to you guys, especially since it's my first time doing it. So I'm gonna link the tutorial that I found the most helpful below if it's something you feel like taking on yourself. So I think the first step in this is gonna to be to disconnect the water so that we don't have a leaking situation. <laughs> All right, caught through the first step, water is off. Now we have to disassemble the old tap. The worst part about this is that you can't see anything. It's so tight up in here, all the parts. <laughs> Half an hour trying to get this out of the sink. 
It feels good. Oh my goodness, you guys. I can't even hold this camera. My legs are shaking from like holding the pose <laughs> under the thing, but I finally got the old faucet off. Um, the doors had to come off the cabinet. The shelf had to come out. And I think I had to use almost every type of wrench and pliers that Austin owned <laughs> to get that out. It was a battle, I tell you, but okay. As you can see, it's it's out. We got some empty spaces here. So, part three of this, part one was no water, part two was taking out the old one, part three is now putting the new one in. And the guy I was watching on the video on how to do this said that taking it out is usually harder than putting it back in, so I'm really hoping, whatever your name was, I'm hoping that's the case. Let, let's do this. His name is Mark. This my boy Mark got me through this. <laughs> Okay, four hours later, it's moment of truth time. I took the little, you're supposed to take, there's like a little aerator in sinks, which makes the water flow nicely. You're supposed to take that out when you first run it. So it might not run like so crisp. I'm just managing expectations here, but we hope it runs at all and it doesn't leak all over the floor. Okay, okay, let's do it. Oh my God, we have water. <laughs> do we have water elsewhere? No, it's not leaking. Oh my God, you guys, this is the greatest joy of my life right now. Wow. Look how disgusting my hands are. I think I broke about six nails doing this, but this feels great right now. All right, good morning. It is day two working on this bathroom, feeling good about it. So my mirror just came, which is great, but I think before I get started on anything else, we have some shopping to do. So here's the list of what we have to pick up. We need some wood to make some new cabinet doors. We need a new toilet seat. We need a black shower curtain rod. And I wanna replace the towel hooks on the door with new ones. I feel like I was sleeping on Canadian Tire because their stuff is so cute. This canvas line. I went to Home Depot before and all the wall hooks they had were so boring. But these, I love. Oh, gold. Now I don't know what color to do. <sighs> okay, so now we have all this stuff. One of the things I want to do in here is replace the cabinet doors with something that's a bit more modern and not so ornate looking as the original one was. So it's actually not the worst. I had to take the doors off yesterday to fix the sink because I need to take them off anyways to make new ones. The one thing I'm not gonna replace is the actual cabinet unit. That is too much work. I don't wanna do that. <laughs> so what my plan is, I'm hoping, is I'm gonna make the new doors and then I love to paint this black so you kind of don't notice it and then the doors are the thing that stands out. I'm thinking the black might mask the fact that this is so fancy. Here, let me show you. Check out the feet on this guy. <laughs> the first plan of action is paint this black and then we're gonna make some new doors. All right, that was loud. For the new doors, I'm essentially just gonna straight up copy the dimensions of the old ones so I know they're guaranteed to fit and why make more work for myself, right? So I'm drawing my inspo for these cabinets kind of based off this photo. I like how it's very simple but still has a trim. And also, luckily for me, this kind of matches the cabinets that are in my kitchen. So it's gonna help tie the whole house together a little bit better, I hope. To make the holes in the back of the cabinet so they fit with the hinges, you'll need something called a Forstner bit. They are about 20-ish dollars at the hardware store, at least mine was, um, and they help to make a perfect little hole for your cabinet's hinge to go in. Okay, I obviously need to sand and stain and actually finish them, but before I do all that, I just wanna make sure that they actually work and the holes I made line up. So I'm gonna put them on just so I can feel good before moving on to the next steps. The good thing is the holes line up, but I think because my door maybe is a little thicker than the last one, let's see. Oh yeah, what does this mean and how do I fix it? Okay, back to the drawing board. Okay, take it back. <laughs> wow, ready for the most fun fact? Um, these two screws here move the door slightly forwards and backwards and left and right the tiniest bit, so I just played around with that and my door is now so flush, so flush. And it opens without a problem, wow. Bless the inventor of these hinges, seriously. Okay, it's handle time. Okay, 
Okay, for a shower curtain, I couldn't find a black one, so I'm using a curtain rod, which when you think about it is literally the same thing. That is so much better. All right, short break from the bathroom to do a little bit of thrifting. Hi guys, welcome to the third and last day of the bathroom makeover. Here are some things that happened between yesterday and today. Black mirror from Amazon got put up and I love it. These hooks got swapped out for the ones I found at Canadian Tire. This light I changed to one I got off Wayfair. The other one, the exposed bulbs were just very harsh to look at. This guy got stained and finished. Okay, so the very last DIY I wanna do in here is build a shelf to go under the mirror. Since we took the one off this wall, I want to do like a long skinny one that runs the whole way under the mirror. But the reason I needed to put this up first is because I think I'm going to have to make the shelf so it kind of cuts in around the sink because the space is quite small. I don't know why I sung that. <laughs> and I think I'm going to do it live edge because I have a live edge shelf in my living room that I put up recently and I love it. So we've got more of that wood. So I might do kind of like a live edge thing here. Let's go figure that out. Okay, so I didn't have one piece that was long enough, but that's okay because these two pieces actually kind of match up nicely, which is really good. So this is like the overall dimension. What I need to do now is draw out where the sink is gonna go, or the faucet, should I say, and then cut that out. Okay, this is where it needs to go in for the faucet. It needs to go down to a depth of two inches. So I guess let's find the center here. Because it's live edge, I want it to have like a natural curve. So almost as if like the actual live edge of the wood grew that way, even though it obviously didn't. That's what I'm gonna try and cut out. All right, that saw is not loving that wood because it's very hard wood. So I think I'm just gonna have to go really slow. It might take a while. So I'll catch up with you guys once it's done. All right, these are my two pieces. Cut and sanded. I wish this edge was a little bit more round, but this was not an easy cut to make, so that's okay. So I'm gonna actually attach them on the bottom using this bar. Then all I need to do is seal it, and then we're on to installing it. Okay, on second thought, I'm actually gonna hang it right now because I wanna wood fill that crack that's in the two pieces and I'd like it to be set in position, not moving at all when I do that. Okay, my plan to hang these is to use these little corner braces so they're underneath and you won't see them and it'll kinda look like a floating shelf, which will be great in theory. Let's, let's go do that. It's not up yet, but I love it. So once the shelf is fully secured onto the wall, I'm using wood filler to just fill that little gap between the two pieces. And once that's dry, I sanded it down smoothly. So the two pieces kind of look pretty flush at this point. The next step is to seal the whole thing. So I'm just taping off the mirror so I don't get any sealant on the mirror. And then using a paintbrush to just paint on this clear lacquer to protect the wood. And I did about three to four coats, making sure to sand in between each coat. So this is how it looks. I love it so much. Adding a clear coat just made the wood color pop so beautifully. Oh, and I added just, I feel like you can't even really see these, which is great. They're just little pieces of dowels that I stuck underneath just to give it extra support so it really doesn't go anywhere. So that's how it's looking right now. Oh, and one last thing that I ended up doing because I'm indecisive and I've changed my mind a lot is that black cabinet. Yeah, I went over it all with white chalk paint because I just thought the black was looking a little too heavy and it was a lot with the black and the wood and the gold handles. So I covered it all with white and I like it a lot more this way. You guys can tell me what you think if you prefer the black prefer the white. I just wanted the black to kind of be like little touches peppered around the bathroom and not giant statement pieces like the cabinet. So it's white now. All right, you guys, all of the DIYs are finally finished in the bathroom and it's coming together. So I think all we're missing right now are some final touches because you know it's not a makeover video on our channel if we don't include final touch time.
Alright you guys, I am so happy with how this bathroom turned out. Honestly, I didn't know where this journey was going to take us when I started, but I love the overall feel of it. I think it's so much more cozy now. It almost gives me like a cottagey feel with the woods and the whites. I just can't believe how well we made the tile and the flooring work. That was kind of that neutral beige color, but overall I think the tones just work together so much more beautifully now. And I actually think that the functionality of the bathroom is even better too with the giant shelf instead of the little one on the wall that we had before. And somehow I feel like the bathroom actually feels even bigger, which is always a plus. And I will try and link as many of the products as I can used in this bathroom in the description below. All right, thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I hope you learned some tips here and there or some DIYs you can try out in your space. And at the very least, maybe this inspires you to tackle a bathroom in your house. If you liked this video or you like makeovers or DIYs in general, please subscribe to this channel because we do them all the time. And I'd love to see you around more often. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button and we will see you next time with more DIYs and more room makeovers. All right, bye guys.